It had been three long days. The echoes of the cross still filled the air. There was a darkness that was palpable. A sense of dread that was all-consuming. Fear permeated the landscape. Powered by an inconceivable loss, hope was dead. But in the distance was a sound. The sound of earth moving, of foundations rattling, the sound of God taking back the world he loved. Darkness had been flooded with light. Fear had been overtaken by hope. Death had been swallowed in victory. In that moment, sin lost its power. The grave lost its sting. And evil was left broken in defeat. He is victorious. He is triumphant. He is risen. Jesus is alive. Well, happy Easter, friends. He is risen. He is risen indeed. I sure am glad that you made the choice today to join us on this Easter Sunday here with the Morning Star Methodist Community of Faith. We're going to be concluding our series entitled Journey of Stones today, and this is going to be a great day to celebrate with our community of faith. So hang in there. We're going to celebrate the greatest moment in the history of all of humankind, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We sure are glad that you're here. Please join me for our opening prayer. Risen Christ, please enter our worship and our hearts this day. Just as you raised Jesus from the dead, you offer us new and transformed lives in the risen Christ. We rejoice and give thanks for this good news, which has been handed down to us from generation to generations since your resurrection. May we, too, be witnesses of Jesus, who you anointed with the Holy Spirit to bring blessing of mercy and healing to others. May we be witnesses of Jesus' suffering and death and how he meets us in the broken places of our lives. Most of all, may we be witnesses of the resurrection, sharing your promise of forgiveness and grace with all people. As you live and move among us, remind us to proclaim and light the life only you offer. Inspire us to walk as people of your resurrection each and every day. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who is life and offers a life more abundant. Amen.
has led Alleluia Following our exalted head Alleluia Be like Him, like Him we rise Alleluia Ours the cross, the grave, the sky Good morning. Happy Easter. Today's a very special day, and even though it's a little different, we're still celebrating as a family. I brought Katie here with me today, and she's going to help me tell this very important story. Now, I'm going to need your help, too. So when I'm reading through this very important story, I'm going to come to a couple key words. When I get to those key words, we're going to hold up a sign, and I need your help by you reading what's on the sign. The first word is Jesus. So when we get to Jesus, you're going to say, He is risen. Next, when I say he is risen, you're going to say indeed. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. On the Sunday after Jesus, he is risen, was crucified, Mary Magdalene and another woman named Mary went to visit the tomb where Jesus, he is risen, has been buried. When they arrived, the stone that had covered the tomb had been rolled away. And an angel was sitting on it. The two women were shocked and honestly a bit afraid. Don't be afraid, the angel said to them. I know you are looking for Jesus. He is risen. Who was crucified? He is not here. He is risen. Indeed. Just as he said he would. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. The two Marys looked in and saw that the tomb was emptied, and they hurried away. They were surprised. They were afraid, but they were filled with joy, boys and girls. As they ran to tell the disciples, they met Jesus. He is risen. They ran to him and grabbed him, and they worshipped him. Jesus, he is risen, said to them, Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee and they will see me there. Boys and girls, last week we talked about the story and how the story of Jesus' crucifixion and the week leading up to that. And that's kind of what we went through last week. And today we went through that very, very beautiful time of Easter. The time that it all starts back over, that the beginning really is here. Easter is here. The celebration of our Lord and Savior, Him rising from the dead and giving us a new life our new life that we can begin today if we haven't already done so. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do our traditional thing, which I love so very much. We're going to lead the congregation in the Lord's Prayer. Now I'm going to ask each of you to bow your heads and close your eyes as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
Boys and girls, I miss you so very much, and I hope to see you soon. Have a great Easter. Bye-bye. The shroud that was cast all over the people has been destroyed. Our separation from our God is gone forever, and death has been swallowed up forevermore. The Lord of hosts will wipe away every tear from our faces, and our disgrace is taken away. Our sins are removed as far as the east is from the west. We are forgiven, for the Lord has spoken, and Jesus has conquered the grave. It will be said on that day, this is our God. We have waited for him. He has saved us. This is our God. His steadfast love endures forever. He has saved us. This is our God. We have accepted his sacrifice and he has saved us. This is our God. We wait no more. He has made a way. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. The kingdom of God is here. Let us be glad and rejoice. This is our God, and this is his salvation. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Well, friends, happy Easter. What a day it is. What a wonderful day it is. It's Easter the one who was dead is now very much alive, and we're here to celebrate. Today, we're going to be talking about this final part of our series entitled The Journey of Stones, and we're going to learn about removing the biggest stone. But Easter Sunday brings so much emotion for me and so many great memories. And at one time, I heard this uh, custodian talk about going through the church uh, after Easter Sunday, and he saw the pastor's outline on the podium there on the pulpit, and he looked at it, and the pastor had written off to the side of the, of the outline, weak point, raise voice and pound the pulpit. Well, on Easter Sunday, and every Sunday really here at Morningstar, when we talk about the power of the resurrection, there are no weak points. No need to raise a voice, no, re no reason to pound a pulpit, because there's no weak points. The disappointment that we had on Good Friday has been replaced with unspeakable joy. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And today, as we begin our time together, we're going to read from John's Gospel together, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. And here is what Scripture tells us about this very special day. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb, and while it was still dark, and saw the stone already removed from the tomb. So she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to him, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we do not know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple left, and they were going to the tomb. The two were running together, and the other disciple ran ahead faster than Peter and came to the tomb first. And he stooped to look in, and he saw the linen wrappings lying there. However, he did not go in. So Simon Peter also came following him, and he entered the tomb, and he looked at the linen wrappings lying there. And the face cloth which had been on his head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but folded up in a place by itself. So the other disciple who had first come to the tomb also entered then, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. So the disciples went away again to their own homes. But Mary was standing outside the tomb, weeping so as she wept. She stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been lying. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they put him. When she had said this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there, and yet she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Thinking that he was the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you put him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop clinging to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father 
and your Father, and my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that He had said these things to her. Friends, that morning Mary went to the grave all alone. And most of the time, when we grieve, we need to be surrounded by friends and family when we're faced with the death of a loved one. There's both comfort and strength in numbers, but sometimes we don't really want that much company. We crave the silence. Sometimes we just need to be alone as Mary was on this very first Easter Sunday. You see, the stone presented a large obstacle. When she arrived, the large stone was gone. So she jumps to this radical conclusion. Grave robbers. She sprinted back to tell the others of the discovery. Peter and John, they were not content simply to hear about the news. They had to see, they had to go and see it for themselves. They ran to the tomb. John arrived first and saw the grave close, but did not go inside. He sat there and waited for Peter. And Peter, ever the impetuous one, he didn't even break stride. He bolted into the grave and saw that it was empty. He immediately knew that Jesus had risen from the dead. They didn't understand it all. Maybe they never really did, just like maybe we never do. But they believed that Jesus was alive. You see, friends, it was no coincidence that the first clue to the resurrection of Jesus Christ was that the stone had been removed. The life implications are enormous. You see, Mary's life had been full of large obstacles. Jesus had delivered Mary from a life of sorrow and hopelessness. Many believe that He delivered her from demonic possession. When Jesus was buried on a Friday, a giant stone was placed between Jesus and the people who loved Him. The stone was a barrier for Mary that she was completely incapable of moving by herself. And though Mary went to visit Jesus' grave, she wouldn't be able to see Him because the stone was in the way. She wouldn't be able to touch Him because the stone would prevent her. You see, it was a barrier that she was incapable of moving herself. Somebody had to do it for her. And friends, somebody did. And today, we end our journey of stones. All the stones that were placed here in live worship at the altar and the foot of the cross... These were the stones for someone's pride. Some of these stones stood for someone's dishonesty. And a few of the stones stood for a fractured marriage, while others stood for the sin of gossip or prejudice or adultery or hatred or bitterness. And by the end of Good Friday, this table was covered with stones, our stones, our sins. And we can't remove those sins by ourselves. Someone must do that for us, and someone has. And if you were here in live worship this morning on the Morning Star campus, you would see that all the stones are gone. All the sins have been removed. And friends, that is the ultimate message of Easter. We could not remove our sins by ourselves. God did this for us through His Son with no questions asked. You know, friends, in truth, none of us are really that different from each other. We've all sinned. And, and you may think that your sins are too great to be forgiven, but if you think that, you'd be wrong. You may think that God can't accept you just the way that you are. And if you think that, you'd be wrong. You see, friends, the biggest stone in life was removed by Jesus. Jesus and His love for us has removed the large obstacles that prevents all of us from living a life of purpose and joy. The sins have been forgiven and all followers of Jesus are given this gift of eternal life. The Savior and the Creator of the world has chosen to love us. W.C. Fields was a, a famous vaudeville comedian, but he was also a notorious atheist. And one evening before one of his performances, an assistant came into Fields' dressing room and caught W.C. Fields reading the Bible. Now he was embarrassed. Fields slammed the Bible shut and he said, I'm just looking for loopholes. Well, what W.C. Fields was looking for was grace. And what he was looking for was forgiveness, a second chance, and a time to start over. Well, friends, Easter is the ultimate loophole to a life of grace and freedom. You see, friends, when Jesus made good on his promise to rise from the grave, all of his promises, they became 
a reality for all of us. His promise to forgive sins. His promise to be with us wherever we may go. And His promise to give us an eternal life. Friends, these are not loopholes. These are facts. Easter is meant to transform our lives each day. And not just on this day of celebration that we call Easter. Do you know the joy of Easter every day? What about Tuesday or next Saturday or in October when pumpkins are everywhere? Or what about when people let you down or when a loved one dies on this side of eternity? Or maybe when the guilt that we allow to remain in our lives overwhelms us once again and kind of washes over us and makes us feel anxious Will the power of Easter be just a distant memory then? Friends, in 1988, when the Berlin Wall came tumbling down, this young woman named Anna in East Germany was already asleep when a friend pounded on the door. Anna, the wall is down and we have freedom. You must come and see, she said. They ran down to the gate that had once divided East and West for 30 years, and it was true. The Berlin Wall had been toppled. For three hours they partied on the border and they ran back and forth between the east side and the west side. They danced with fellow countrymen and strangers and then they went back to their own homes. Well, the next morning Anna awoke and thought she had dreamed the entire experience because it seemed too good to be true. Quickly she got dressed and she ran back down to the border and remembered that it was all true. She picked up a piece of the broken wall and she took it home with her, now a tangible reminder that she was free. Friends, today as we look at this empty table where all of our stones were placed, we are reminded that we are free all by the grace of God, all through the power of His resurrection. We're released from all the shame of our sins. We are free from the punishment of eternal death. And friends, we are free to be alive. And if the sun makes you free, you shall be free and free indeed. Happy Easter, my friends. Thanks be to God for God's miraculous gift of the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. His name was Lazarus, brother of Mary and Martha, friend of Jesus. One day Lazarus became ill, and so his sisters sent word to Jesus saying, Lord, the one you love is sick. When it was time, Jesus came to the house where Lazarus was, but the man, Lazarus, was already dead. Jesus was deeply moved and troubled, so he wept, but through his tears, Jesus knew that this had to happen, for God's glory would be put on display that day like never before. Jesus approached the tomb of his friend, and with a thundering voice, he cried, Lazarus, come out. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin. Lost without hope, with no place to begin. Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began Her name was Mary of Magdala, consumed with darkness, possessed by demons that controlled her mind and corrupted her soul. But as Mary soon found out, demons are no match for the Son of God. Jesus healed Mary, casting out her demons and restoring her heart to his. And the darkness within her had no more power. Her mourning turned to dancing, her sorrow turned to joy. And Mary, humble and grateful, responded with surrender, following the one who set her free. Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains. And my orphan heart was given a name. 
my morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested and my life began. His name was Simon Peter, fisherman by trade, disciple of Jesus. As a friend in Jesus' inner circle, Peter was witness to the many miracles and healings of the Messiah. Peter's strong faith and sharp tongue would be emboldened continuously for the work of Christ. When Jesus was arrested and stood trial, Peter denied knowing him three times. But in Peter's brokenness, God was already beginning to restore him, preparing his faith to be unshaken, preparing his tongue to preach the truth. For Peter, everything was about to change. Released from my chains, I'm a prisoner. My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested in my In a place called Golgotha, Jesus was nailed to a cross to die. His friends and family watching in horror as he breathed his last breath. Was this how it would end? This Jesus, the King of the Jews, the promised Messiah reduced to public death on a criminal's cross? He raised Lazarus from the tomb. He cast out Mary's demons. He taught his disciples everything they needed to know and yet it is finished? What kind of savior is this? Our savior displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. They carried his body from the cross to a borrowed grave. A great stone was rolled across the entrance to the tomb and Roman soldiers were appointed to stand guard. There, Jesus' lifeless body laid for three days. Suddenly, there was a violent earthquake. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven and rolled the stone away. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? With breath in his lungs and all power from heaven, Jesus Christ rose from the dead, came forth from the grave, and set us free. But then Jesus rose with our freedom in hand. Oh yes, that's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes all. Please join me for our closing prayer. Risen Savior and Redeemer of the world, when we choose to hide in the tombs of death, lead us into true life. When we cower in our fears and regret, encourage us with your mercy and your grace that we might claim the abundant life you offer. May we always embrace your love and live in your risen presence. Your resurrection and life are our peace. 
we depart from this sacred place to go and proclaim the risen Christ. We go to live as people of your resurrection. We go to love and serve as Easter people, people filled with hope and life and love for all the world. We pray this in the name of the risen one, Jesus. Amen. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord will be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord will be praised. Well, friends, thank you for being with us for this Easter Sunday, this Easter celebration. I look forward to worshiping with you again very soon. Blessings on you. And remember, he is risen. <laughs>